Hey guys, Leanna here. Playing the escapist. Whoopsie. Uh Thanks for your uh, last video. Sorry guys, I'm rushing. I'm trying to make a roll call. Uh, thank you all for your very, very, you know, thoughtful, respectful YouTube comments. Uh, yes, on yesterday's video, because it was about gender, and as I've been told numerous times, gender is a very divisive topic. It doesn't matter how, how you go about it, it's divisive. Somebody's going to complain. So some people think that the way to go about dealing with that is to just not talk about it, and that's their prerogative. I'm not going to say it's wrong. But, you know, that's not my prerogative, because I think that... The pendulum's swinging a little bit too far away from the middle lately, and it's it's impacting people like me quite badly. I mean, we're you know we're gonna talk uh, we're gonna talk again today about something that is has made me feel you know less than comfortable in one sphere of gaming, or or at least in t at least attending in the way that I like to. And I, I'm making this, uh, I'm making this caveat specifically because we're going to talk about the PAX, you know, booth babe cosplay rules, which have been in place since 2010. They're not new, but, but Mark Kern, uh, you know, pointed out the silly wording on the rule. And so it's an opportunity to talk about it. And... First of all, I think what Mark Kern's doing right now is, is really cool. It's a big risk professionally, and that's why more people aren't doing it. But I think that him using his platform to call these things out in a, you know, in a fun, like he's not mad or anything, it's just this is silly. And he's right, it's not something worth getting angry over, and, and uh, so I want to be clear. I'm just using this as an opportunity to explore the topic and try to educate people because people don't know the, the penny arcade guys are good guys and they take so much crap because they're lovable buttheads and and they they talk the way people talk and that's why they're so popular but you know in, in a community as uptight as fandom talking the way people talk is enough to get you in trouble and I'm having a really hard time navigating the social graces of, of fandom lately because it's so puritanical. And so what happened was Mark mentioned the aggressive navels and you know, aggressive cleavage in navels. And he's like, what does that mean? And, and I agree. I think that might be a, a resoundingly American thing. Because, I, I admit, I, I do not know what uh, aggressive navels or, or cleavage is. Skirts for, mo no more than four inches above the knee, I understand. Okay, that's clear. But what is an aggressive navel? Nobody knows, and this is the problem with these rules. I mean, the, the actual booth babe part of it is not an issue because, you know... <sighs> Because it has to be cleared in advance. So, okay, problem solved. There's a negotiation if, you know, you're a company with a booth bit. You have to submit the design in advance. And, okay, that's fine. That rule makes sense. That rule functions. But then right at the end of that rule on their website, which, let's face it, how many people read the Penny Arcade website, you know, about safety and stuff? We assume it's safe. You know, people assume it's safe, so they're not going to read this part of the rules. And this is why I went, huh? This is giving this is giving the show an awful lot of power rule. Because it says, cosplaying attendees, not exhibitors, attendees, will be asked to alter or modify their costume if it is considered overtly sexual. 
alter or modify your costume if somebody determines your costume is too sexual based on their say so. Why would you wear the costume in the first place? That, that's a backdoor way of saying no sexy costumes because you might be forced to alter it. I mean, ask, okay, you can choose to leave. Nobody's gonna alter a costume. Cosplayers, cosplayers make the costumes they are because they, they like them exactly the way they are. It's an egregious insult to a cosplayer for, for somebody to tell them to alter their costume due to propriety. Here's the thing about cosplay, guys. Yes, some people do adapt cosplay, but let's face it, those, you know, sexy frozen outfits, sexy whatever, those are Halloween costumes that people buy. It, it turns out one I bought is actually a Tina outfit from the, you know, the Shadow Band Dead or Alive mod costume. So, hey, I gotta do cosplay, I'm excited. Blonde wig, change of boots, off to the races. She's got these little black cuffs that I have to get to. But it's an easy costume, and Tina happens to be my favorite dead, my favorite dead or alive character, so it works out perfectly. But you know, I don't dress in you know a tank top, cut off shorts, and a cowboy hat every day of my life. Cosplay is cosplay. It's not streetwear. And the thing about cosplay is that you're not. You're not dressing just to look pretty, trust me, that would be a lot less work and a lot less strain on the body. For a lot of cosplayers, you are trying to get the costume as detailed and accurate as possible. So the idea that you would be asked to alter your costume is an insult. It's an insulting rule. It's, it's a cultural violation with cosplayers. And I'm really surprised this rule has been on the books for four or five years and no one said anything about this. It's, it's a cultural insult to art. And the problem is cosplay isn't seen as art, it's seen as attention seeking. And this is why we get into these problems. But, but you know, I'm somebody who, who does sexy cosplay. And you may notice I don't dress that way in my real life. In, in fact, I never know what to wear when I'm going to a formal event or especially if I have to go to some sort of religious function. Oh God, I freak out. Yeah, I freak out because I'm so self-conscious about seeming immodest. I, you can only buy the clothes that exist on the rack in a store unless you make your own and I unfortunately don't have time to make my own clothes anymore. So, things look different on me than they look on an average endowed person. And that's really important regarding modesty because I can put something on and everything's made of these damn stretch fabrics. So something can look perfectly fine when I put it on and then two or three hours later it's, you know, it's cleavage, it's a cleavage monster. It's alive. And, and people make assumptions about me based on that, Andrew. And it's really hard to explain how conflicted that, that makes you. You know, conflicted about society, conflicted about your own body, conflicted about how the world sees you. It's, it's a really... It's, it's, you know, people are going to think, oh, you're over-dramatizing, but this is, this is just, it, it just makes things harder that don't need to be harder. And so through cosplay, I can, I, I can center myself on an idea in human form. And that's what cosplay is about. It's ideas in human form. And because they're ideas, and, and they're, they're very, for people who are as, you know, hardcore into cosplay as I am, these are tender ideas. You know, the best cosplayers take massive, cosplayers take massive risks with their own body. 
And because what we're trying to do is we're trying for a few hours at a time to get out from under the shame associated with womanhood. That's what we're doing when we do sexy cosplays. It's supposed to be a time where it's considered okay to explore that, that part of the human condition. Because sex is what we need to reproduce. And, you know, guys, nobody ever questions a guy's morality because he wears armor. Even though armor is associated with killing and aggression, I mean, that's what soldiers do, but nobody thinks, you know, nobody thinks somebody wears, an, wears armor, they're, they're actually gonna go out and kill someone. Nobody feels threatened by armor. So the masculine ideal is considered a-okay. But the traditionally feminine idea of that sort of earth goddess exaggerated characteristic, you know, Ishtar Inanna, well, those are figures that a lot of people don't know, but those old fecundity goddesses, that's the root that these things are coming from. And women are being shamed for wanting to explore the goddess. And I have a real problem with that, obviously. And I think that people just don't know what they're doing. They don't understand what goes in to making those costumes. I did it for my self-esteem. I did it for going, here's my body, and it's not fat, and it's not offensive, and it's not, it's not dangerous to anybody. It's beautiful, and I'm going to own it. And even if it's not, I'm going to own it. This is me. Screw beauty. This is me. This is the way I was born. I've had, you know, three surgeries in my life. One on my knee, one on my appendix, and one on my wisdom teeth. None of them were cosmetic. This is just the way I grew. And, and imagine, imagine what that's like. People saying, the body God gave you, or the spaghetti monster gave you, if you're, you don't believe in God. The, the, the body you were given in this life, you know, the, the class of the RPG you were given to play, is inherently bad. Imagine that, you are a menace to society. Now imagine coming along and having a show run by a bunch of dudes say, we reserve the right to tell you to cover up if we think, you know, you're, and I know it's not the Penny Arcade guys doing it. And it wouldn't be right if women did it either, because let's face it, the root of this is some very angry women. And all it is, is competitiveness. It's female competitiveness. These women have gotten an in with these shows. They, they have encouraged the show owners and the show runners to feel guilt. They have exploited male guilt. And they are running that because they want to eliminate the competition for resources. That's what all these things are. Competition for resources. Everybody wants attention. Everybody. And, and you know, the, the, the easiest way to level the playing field, as these women see it, is get rid of the sexy women. We're a threat. No, we're not. Personally, I think we overvalue appearance as a society. I think we put too much stock in it. I think that there's not enough, because we're so hung up on female appearance, our beauty paradigms are too rigid. They're, how do I put this? They don't benefit anybody. They're not ideals that anybody can live up to. And they, they just sort of put everybody down because most men don't even like them. And I mean, lesbians are completely left out of the damn equation. Lesbians are constantly screaming, what about us? We exist. Screw this male gaze crap. We look at boobs too. You know, <laughs> that's where we're at. To sit here and go what are we doing what are we doing using this system that benefits no one really 
So I just, I just wanted to do that educational element because I think it is important and, and hopefully you sort of learned what sexy cosplay is and what sexy cosplay does. And I'll probably end up talking about this more with the cosplay show and everything like that. But to me, I don't, I don't think that role is put in, you know, to deliberately declare war on women exploring that space. I think they panicked and they put in a rule to save their own butts and, and that they didn't consider the people they were alienating in doing so. So hopefully the word can be reworded so it's less vague, so people know going in what is expected of them and what isn't. And, you know, if, if it's not a skirt four inches above the knee, if it's a bodysuit, is that okay? Like, what is this, Catholic school? So the rule needs work. The rule needs work. It's too vague and it's alienating people. I don't, I enjoy cosplaying at shows because I think that's like, for me, that's the real way to see a show. And if I can't cosplay at a show and feel comfortable, there's a lot less, um, I mean, the last time I was at PAX, it was for work. So I didn't cosplay, but I, uh, cause people judge you, unfortunately, when you cosplay. But I, I always wanted to go back as a fan. But what's the point of going back as a fan if I can't cosplay? That's what I am, I'm a cosplayer. It's the way I express myself. It's the way I communicate with the world. And I'm trying to work on something that made me feel bad my whole life. I dress sexy because that is an element that has made me feel bad my whole life. And I found one thing, one fucking thing that made me feel better, made me not ashamed, made me proud. I was doing something, it's a skill. Yes, there's a certain amount of genetics involved, but it's a skill to get those costumes to work. And it's a skill to own those costumes, to strut that. And now they're trying to demonize that too. Fuck you, that ends with me. I will bow my head and succumb to that. I'd rather not go. I'd rather not go. And that's what it comes down to. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Please keep your comments respe respectful. Please do not, oh, good time to wrap up. That's the phone. Okay, guys, thanks.